This is me coming to you once again with another fireside chat with Dr. Fire. It's been a little while since I made anything. I guess I've just been busy doing idle stuff, you know. Uh, one thing I've taken up here is uh, since this new year came in, taking up uh, lassoing and uh, what is lassoing and um, hog tying. You know, learning how to hog tie and learning how to lasso. Um, I didn't know there was so much skill that went into those things. You know, I used to watch that stuff all at the rodeo and all these other people. People run around with the rope and then they catch the cows and the, now they have the bulls by the horns and the cattle and all that other thing. You watch all these. I didn't know it was any technique to it, but it's a technique to that stuff. It's difficult. I thought you used to could just roll up just like your whole arm and all that. Uh-uh, but it's in the wrist. It's all in the wrist that you got to do. And even when you got to do that loop, to make the little loop around to do the lasso. There's technique to that too. So, you know, it's uh, it's something to do. Keep busy. Besides, you never know when you might have to hog tie, Negro. <laughs> Get out of here. They don't know how to act right. You just hog tie them. <laughs> Drag them to the curb. Call their mama. Tell mama to come pick them up. And they really don't know how to act. You just hog time, drag them to the curb, don't even bother calling the mama. You just go out there with your maple You go out there with your maple syrup. Ah, pour it all around them. Let the insects get him. <laughs> and then call 911. Come pick up the car. <laughs> you people need to understand what your proclivities are before they go out here acting any kind of way, doing any kind of thing. <laughs> Because you never know what you might walk into. Anyway, I was just funning. But I'm just saying, you know, you never know. You need to take up these little skills and stuff like that. You know, I was watching the news. <laughs> it's always something going on news. You know, I just leave a lot of times. I just let the news be playing in the background. For me to be doing whatever it is I'm doing. Whether it's on the computer or doing something around the kitchen or in another room. And the news just playing in the background. And sometimes all you're doing is minding your own business. <laughs> And then somebody get up here and say something silly. And then you're laughing all day long because of what these people have said. And then, and, and one thing, too, when you're, when you're older, you get to be my age and you'll walk through the fiery furnace and you've seen the things I've seen, you realize these are the people that would be part of a jury pool when they call your 12 jurors of your peers. This is the pool. This is the pool that they're going to be selected from so many people. With these wild ideas. <laughs> and then they the one that's supposed to be the jury of your peer. It's scary. <laughs> but anyway, let's see what every time a few other things that I just heard in the news the other day. One of them is about the lady, they, these people, they, they, they're, they oh, this is Women's History Month. And I want to give homage to all the women in my life that have helped to mold and shape me and that have stood in the gap for me and then, um, you know, contributed it to uh, you know, my safety and protection and then giving me the wings and put the giving me the, the, the support to be able to get the lift between my wings and, and fly off. And that would be my parents, you know, my mom. That'd be all my aunts. And then of course my siblings and I would say even going to my nieces and nephews and my my uh my adoptive nieces and nephews and my foster nieces and nephews, all these people all apart. Well, since it's women, I would say my nieces. They're all a part of my support system and all the kind of stuff. And uh, older people, my ancestors, my grandparents and my great-great-grandparents are all the people who are all a part of the journey that arrived, got us here to the 21st century and allowed us to be who we are. You know, people stood in the gap for us. Folks didn't take advantage of us when we couldn't take advantage of ourselves. Anyway, so I want to say that. Because look, here at Women's History Month down here in Dallas, they had this assembly of women, you know, a council of women coming together because what they want to do is they want to make the uh, nightclubs, like these businesses that oper operate at night, they want to make it safer for women. Like the, uh, the they say the restaurants, the bars, and of course the apartment complexes. They want to get together and get with these business owners and say what they can do to make it safe for women. You know, and then what makes me laugh, and I had to crack up all day on this, is because the lady said, the one of the council women, you know, because they always on news, they got to say something. So the woman was saying, yeah, they got together to talk about things. I guess to improve the lighting and, you know, security and stuff like that. And the lady said, eh, 
Yeah, we need to do this. We need to do this because I don't want to be looking over my shoulder all the time. <laughs> I'm like, what? Okay, so you go on to all these business people and what these business people invest in doing things that necessary. Big enough that he can squeeze through, he can get his head through, 
And then there goes the rest of his body. So that's a thinking dog coming over to that man's yard. And you know how dogs are. Now he got both paws on, on in that territory on that man's property. You like Putin. <laughs> now this is his territory. He won't take over. But the lady said he ain't got to worry about it. They all bark. No bite. They're not dangerous. They like family to her. She love her dogs. But look, the reason why they in, 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 in about to get euthanized is because the dogs attacked her when she was trying to break up a fight. She said they got into a fight over food, and she tried to break it up, and so then they attacked her, and then, of course, she had to go to the hospital and get sold up or whatever. But, you know, they're not dangerous. But, but for the food, <laughs> but for the food, <laughs> they wouldn't have attacked her. You see what I'm saying? The lady taking no personal responsibility for her animals to be on somebody else's property, disrupting that man, in my opinion, but disrupting his peace on earth. Because now he got to pick up uh, arms to protect himself on his own property against somebody else's dogs who shouldn't have been over there. But anyway, this is the jury pool that they're going to pull from. Somebody who don't even recognize that. Because see, my problem is, I think that she should get a chance to get the dogs back before they euthanize the dogs. Hey, the dog's fault. Because, uh, right, they sent a letter to her house, told her she needs to come to a hearing to justify and explain, you know, whether or not these dogs are dangerous or not. She didn't go to the hearing. She didn't know. The letter was sent to her house, but it was in her daughter's name. The daughter no longer lives at the house. So, in other words, she was never informed of going to the hearing. So, she went to the hearing. She didn't go. So, of course, now they want to send the letter out for the lady to, uh, to oh, now they deemed the dogs dangerous. So, when she got bit, when it was in the hospital, now that's when the, the state... The city can come in and take the dogs. Now, see, my thing is when she on TV talking about something, that man is an unfounded report. <laughs> These dogs are not dangerous. <laughs> my thing is she needs to get some training. She needs to get some education because that woman should recognize. She don't recognize that just because them dogs are over on that man's property two or three seconds, that's two or three seconds too many, and uh, she needs to be in charge of that. That should never, ever happen. And uh, she the one feeling like she got her dogs are friendly and she love them and they, they never should be in this predicament. But anyway, that had me rolling too. It's like, why these people don't recognize that people have a right to be uh, safe in their own in their own property, and then they have a right to take up arms when they feel threatened. <laughs> but people don't see it. The lady say it's unfounded was her word. The word she used. He filed an unfounded report. Should have been filed on her dogs. And it ain't, it's not, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't the dog's fault. <laughs> because, uh, you know, the people should have, the man should have called, so it was his fault. And the same thing about the food. It was the food's fault <laughs> that she got attacked. <laughs> it wasn't for the dog's fault, it wasn't the dog's fault, it was the food's fault. But for the food, she wouldn't have got attacked because she was trying to break up a fight that they had over food. So that was the other way. I think it was a third way. I'm just going on because I ain't got nothing to say. What is it? 13 minutes? I just go, you know, just want to make a little five-star check because it hadn't been it hadn't been a while since I said anything. And so I just want to put something out there. And then I want to give homage to the to the to the to my ancestors and my support system, uh, you know, females, because this is when the history came out. And I never had a role model in the female, like looking at people on TV and seeing the people I see the people or somebody that's gonna be a role model to me. Uh uh, my family members, my mamas, my aunts, my grandparents, all those people, those are the people who were uh, you know, more role models for me. And so when you you know, you learn and uh, well how a woman's supposed to conduct and carry herself based on how you see them people conducting and carrying themselves. Folks ain't out there uh acting one way in church and then another way at home. It's consistent. And uh, so, anyway, uh, what else it was going on? It was something else in the news. I forgot what it was. Oh, and then, oh, <laughs> another thing that got me rolling was when you minding your business, taking care of things, and then all of a sudden you hear on the news, <laughs> you know, uh, the, the NATO, what is it? the UN wants to file charges against Putin for, uh, what they call it, um, for, for attacking uh, what they say, attacking non-combatants, <laughs> non-combatants of the state. You know, I get it. Let them, let, let them file the charge and put them wrong with two left shoes. But I just couldn't help but laugh because these people were all over the news before before Putin invaded their little, their little country. <laughs> they were all over the news talking about how they're going to stand against Putin. He ain't going to come in here and change their way of life and be a dictator over there. And they want
about democracy. They don't want dictatorship and all that. This is their land, and they go fight for it. And they even get weapons to help them take up arms against against the Russians when they come in, like you know, like we did in the Revolutionary War with the Minutemen. Now those people all on TV talk about what they're gonna do and they're gonna take up arms. How can they be called non-combatants? <laughs> Put bombing houses and and, and, and uh, uh, hospitals and all these places where these civilians would be. He wrong for that. And I'm not giving him credit for. It. I'm just saying the funny thing that made me laugh was the pe- the people called them they called them people non-combatants. The people the people were taking up arms. <laughs> there was no non-combatants, <laughs> but that's okay. I hope they can yeah, go play and file charges against the man. These are hectic times that we live in. I mean, you know, when you out there raising your kids. You have no clue as to what these children are going to be facing. I mean, look at here right now. We all out here almost like on a $4, $5 gas. Uh, you don't know where it's going to go from here. You don't know what's going to happen. I did. So I'm out here and bought myself a bicycle. <laughs> not that I hope I never need it, but it's better to have it, not need it, need it, not have it. Is it gas and prices continue to go up or if they stop making, bringing gas into the country? Oh, yeah, I don't know what might happen. So it's just a matter of preparedness. That's all. That's all. And it was something too else going on in the news with people. Um. Oh, it was something I was watching on TV. It, it was something. Oh, oh blue blood. <laughs> That's why you got to get a handle on your life tragedy. Whatever tragic life experience that you had that made you... Sad or want to drown yourself in sorrow or in a bottle or needles or whatever that these people do. You have to have a handle on your, your tragedy that happened. You have to find a way to make it work. I don't believe in going to the council and sitting on the couch and talking out all about stuff. You just got to find a way to make it work. And to me, I find it, I find the humor in it all. Because a lot of times you don't even have to be thinking about your, your tragedy and there's something that triggers. Like, I was watching Blue Blood the other day, and you know, it was the, the man Reagan. He was the, uh, I forget what his first name is. I don't be knowing these people's name, but it one of them, uh, he wanted the, uh, it wasn't the father, it was the, the, first, the oldest son. And they all police officers. I don't know if you ever saw Blue Blood. But the man, he was, uh, he, he, had to, he had to go, uh, what they call, uh, ask questions to a witness, interview a witness. I guess they call it interview. I don't know what they call it. But anyway, he had to go talk to the witness with his, with his partner, and he saw and the lady flirting with him and all. And he told the lady he married, he got two kids, and all that kind of thing. Married, married, married. Tell that lady all along. Every time she flirted with him, every time, that, every time he had to go to his lady, she flirting with him, and he reminded her that he married. And he had that scene back when he was in his early ages, you know, hanging out all night, hanging out with the women. He don't do that no more. He don't get involved with that no more. So that's what he tell that lady all along. So one day he go in there to interview the lady again, had to ask some more questions to the lady. <laughs> the lady said, okay, I'm going to answer your question, but the call, the price is a dance. You got to dance with me. No, 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 I'm not going to dance. I got wife, I got, I got kids. I'm not doing it. And so he kept telling the lady the same old thing. She grabbed him by his hand, brought him out to the dance floor. <clears throat> so he stood there for a little while, talking about, I ain't dancing, I ain't dancing, I don't want to. But then, <laughs> you know what happened. Next thing you know, the man danced. He danced and all got big old grin on his face. Just dance and cut the hand on the lady, lady hand on him. She said he don't bite. He said I ain't worried about the bite and I'm worried about the hips and just dancing. <laughs> ah, oh, just grinning ear to ear and a good old time. It's gonna be what happens a few minutes later. His partner come in, Reagan, calling him from across the room. Had to call his name two, three times. He, he, he look up. <laughs> The, the 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 smile came off and said, "Is he beckoning him over here?" <laughs> so he coming off the dance floor like a scolded child. He said nothing to the girl. See you later, bye. Uh, gotta go. That just like coming off the dance floor like a scolded child. And he go over to his partner. And what do you think the partner say? The colleague, the peer, the fellow adult, the individual that concerned about the man and care about his his relationships and his his purpose in this life. She told him, man. She he reminded him. He, she said, you know, Kathy or whatever the lady's name is, his wife. You know, she wouldn't if she saw you out there, she wouldn't appreciate that. That's what the partner said. <laughs> and he said, I know you're right. Uh, if I if she was she saw me out there, I'd be on crutches. <laughs> but you see, the reason why that catapults me back to my situation is see that's what people are supposed to do. 
People that know you, love you, care about you, know that you have a vested interest in your family. You got children that you're looking out for that's responsible for you. You have a whole life outside of this club and this lady dancing. And so she reminded him of that. It brought him back to center. He came back. He was like, now he ain't dancing. He ain't dancing no more. Now, it wasn't his power. He was grown. He could have said, no, that's not your business. I'm going out. And they get back on the floor and they got back into his dance. But no. He, he called, he considered himself checked, and he went on, and uh, they went, left, the, left the club, and they went on to the next, whatever they had to do next, went to the job. Again, that's what you're supposed to do. That's what mature people do. That's why you're supposed to have people in your corner. You know, people that can tell you when you're messing up. <laughs> I mean, next thing you know, he's finished the dance, and next thing you know, they'd be up off to her room somewhere. But, but the, the partner, the colleague, the peer, the friend brought him back to center and said, you know better than that. So he adjusted. He said, yeah. Now, where was Reggie's people? Where was his camaraderie? Where were the people that cared about him when he was messed up? Reggie had an entourage. All those people around him were like a big old ugly entourage. They didn't let the man know when he was messing up. Because they let the man could walk down uh, the valley of the shadow of death. And uh, someone death construct what is it? Death chaos and uh, I don't know, death chaos and confusion, or whatever it was. It just wasn't right. It was all messed up. I think like cult activity. <laughs> and I'm gonna go with the full cop losses. Anyway, that's all I got to say. I had nothing to say. It was just a lot of stuff that came on in the news since the last time I had conversation on the fireside chat with Dr. Fire. And it's always worth bringing it up because look, that, that's the only way you're going to know what's going on in my head. Because you see, we never got to spend any time with each other beyond your fifth and seventh year. So, five for Karen, seven for Q. And so, you don't know your parents, people that brought you into this world. And so, all you do, see what's in my head. <laughs> good, bad, bad, whether it's good, bad, or ugly. I don't know. I, you know, I don't mind that to the beat of my own drum. I'm probably the only one who thinks the way I think. <laughs> But that's okay. God made me, and, and, and he's part of me. So like when I was thrown out there into the bushes while the booty call stayed up in the house, Jesus was there with me. But Reggie threw me out into the bush. He threw God out in the bush, too. Couldn't stay in the playhouse in the backyard. Had to, get, <laughs> had to improvise. Had to do something else. Because uh, I, I could, wasn't allowed. So God was with me through all that. But when I did have a comeback on here, I'm going to take turn this one off. Because it had 20 minutes. 22 minutes. So I turn it off. I'm going to tell you about my, my relationship with Christ, I guess, a little bit. Just a little bit. Anyway. <laughs> Turn it off.